Howdy folks, and Happy New Year! I'm finally back in the year 2013, and I'm wondering where the hell my briefcase that turns into a flying car is. What the hell, Jetsons? <laughs> but no, I'm back to continue through Pokemon Red. So if you all will recall, in the previous part we began making our way through Mount Moon. And then one of the rockets, Raticate, beat the living shit out of me. Now I'm completely serious, I barely won. I got pretty lucky. Anyway, after having healed, we're now all set to continue through the mountain. And this rocket right here just summed up in that little opening phrase why I love Team Rocket so much more than any other villain team in all of Pokemon. No, I'm serious. Um, Team... Oh shoot, what are the names? Team Aqua and Team Magma. Weirdos. <laughs> Actually, Team Magma seems like a friggin' cult, and Team Aqua look like pirates. Nah, no, I'm serious, they look like pirates. So, I can't take the either of them seriously. Team Galactic, I believe is their name. Friggin' Psychopaths. No, I, I can't stand them. What's more, their outfits are stupid. I can't stand them. I think they're stupid. <laughs> and then we got Team Plasma, which is definitely number two on the list for best Pokemon villain team. Team Plasma, well, they... One of the things that makes them number two is the fact that they're kind of more realistic than any of the previous ones except for Team Rocket. The thing that makes them definitely not number one, though, is the fact that they're dressed up in medieval night gear, and then you have Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, where they're dressed up in these, like, SWAT special unit uniform things that still kind of look like pirates. Yeah, I, I don't get it. Also, uh, what... What the hell? There's... Well, you know what? I'll save that for a game I'm gonna do later. Ah! No, I'm mad! You made me mad! Team Rocket will blacklist you! I'm... I'm shaking. Really. I'm... I'm terrified. Hey, stop! I found these fossils! They're both mine! Meh. <laughs> So this super nerd, I'm sure several people will argue with me and say he's the toughest opponent in Mount Moon, but I think they're wrong. That Raticate kicked my ass so bad and I ripped through these guys with no trouble. And it's not like my Pokemon have exactly gotten significantly stronger since the Raticate battle. Also, I love how Grimer looks in this one. He looks spaced out and happy and all that. He just I, I love this art design for Pokemon. There are so many that I absolutely love in this game. And then there are some that we've actually already seen this one, but there are some that look pretty much the same. And we're going to see him again as soon as this grammar goes down, but I'm referring to Voltorb. Voltorb has pretty much the same animation, like appearance and everything, that he does in all the future games as well. I guess the designers really liked how Vol Voltorb looked. <laughs> But yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about this Grimer. Uh, just, if you're using a Zubat like I am, use Supersonic to confuse them, and remember, Bug-type moves are super effective against Poison in Pokemon Red. And Blue, and I think Yellow too. So use Leech Life, and you should do fine. Then we come to the Voltorb. I'm almost positive. I wasn't sure in the previous video if Voltorb knew Supersonic at this level. I'm almost positive it doesn't. Otherwise, it would have used it at some point, and it would have just knocked out my Zubat. Or rather, it would have, but I don't keep Zubat out. I was going to, but then I realized how little damage Leech Life does to Voltorb, and I was like, screw it, not worth it. <laughs> so instead, I switch over to Pidgey, which I have my reasons for, which we'll see. We'll see. Screech is a move that, I'm not sure if I've explained it yet or not, but Screech lowers defense two stages, so to speak. It's like if you were to use Tail Whip on a Pokemon twice. So it's pretty useful, just because it lowers so much. You can only use it three times on a Pokemon, whereas it takes six Tail Whips. Zubat hit level 12, and nothing happened. <laughs> also, I'm going to point out right now, pay attention to this coughing's art design. Something very different happens between this style of coughing and then the more updated style. And what I'm referring to is that this coughing has a skull and crossbones on its head, whereas the updated coughing has it on its stomach. And even then, it's not so much a skull and crossbones, it's more of a circle with crossbones. <laughs> also, it looks like he's actually, like, coughing and wheezing in this picture. 
I, I don't know why. I, I really like coughing for some reason. I don't care so much for wheezing, but I like coughing. I think it's an interesting Pokemon. It's also relatively tough, but, you know, at this point it doesn't have enough differing moves to make it a threat. So we just use our Pidgey and use Quick Attack to take him down. Oh, it has Smog too, apparently. If Smog hits you, it has a chance to poison you. Not a high chance, but a chance, and poison would be pretty bad. Yay, Pidgey hit level 18! Okay, I'll share. Mm. <laughs> and Pidgey's evolving. <gasps> it's a Pidgeotto. This is actually my favorite art style for a Pidgeotto. I, I like the pudgy, the pudgy appearance the best. Anyway, at this point, you'll get to choose between either the Dome Fossil or the Helix Fossil. You only get to pick one, but. The difference between the two fossils is which Pokemon you can revive from the, from the fossils much later in the game, and I mean much later in the game. <laughs> the Helix Fossil, I believe, revives into Ammonite, and the Dome Fossil revives into Kabuto. For this playthrough, I chose the Dome Fossil because I like Kabuto better than Ammonite. Either way, though, they're both rock-slash-water-type Pokemon, so they may be worth your while to get one. Anyway, though... When you get to this point, if you were playing Pokemon Yellow, as you can see the colors are a little different, but stop right there. What the? That fossil is Team Rockets. Surrender now or prepare to fight. No, 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 that's not how the motto goes. It's prepare for trouble. Make it double. To protect the world from devastation. To unite all peoples within our nation. To extend... Oop, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's to denounce the evils of truth and love. To extend our reach to the stars above. Jesse. James. Team Rocket, blast off at the speed of light. Surrender now or prepare to fight. Yes, that's right. <laughs> wow, I can't believe I screwed up the motto. And yes, I'm a nerd for actually remembering it, for the most part. But yeah, you get to actually fight Team Rocket, <laughs> if you're playing Pokemon Yellow. Which, it's just awesome that they did that. Pokemon Yellow is very heavily based off of the anime, or cartoon, whatever you want to call it. And it's not just at Mount Moon that you get to battle them in Pokemon Yellow, you can actually battle them at several points throughout the game, and... That's probably my favorite part of Pokemon Yellow. I consider Pokemon Yellow to be inferior to Red, but I still think that that's like the funnest part of Pokemon Yellow. Anyway though, as far as a battle goes, they're definitely tougher than the guy with the Raticate. At least I think so. <laughs> Although I have a Mankey, so maybe that's why I was having more trouble with them as opposed to him. Um, I will not be showing every single time you run into Team Rocket through this playthrough. I'm sorry, I'm playing red, not yellow. But yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Look at the uh, newer style of art for coughing. The skull and crossbones are on his stomach. He doesn't look like he's coughing anymore. Instead, it looks like he's got this evil, evil looking smirk. <laughs> Actually, love it. Like I said, I really like coughing. I don't know why, but I like him. Uh, but yeah, they're pretty tough, and that Mankey went down. <laughs> they're pretty tough, though, so... If you're playing yellow, you know, make sure you're, you're healed before you get to the point where they interrupted you. And yeah, that's Team Rocket. The first battle's not too bad. It's a lot of what we've already seen. Their Meowth is definitely the worst of all their Pokémon. With, with its bite attack, it just tears you a new one. A brat beat us? <laughs> they're also friggin' poor. Team Rocket blast off at the speed of light! Which, uh, that's not how it goes either. It actually goes, It looks like Team Rocket's blasting off again! Anyway, back to Pokemon Red. So, we're gonna take this ladder, and we're actually gonna exit Mount Moon in just one second. Boom! We're out of Mount Moon! <laughs> Route 4, Mount Moon to Cerulean City. So, if you actually did Mount Moon in one straight shot, then, uh, you're probably pretty weak at this point, and you're probably a little concerned, what if I run into more trainer battles? 
I I'm not prepared. I'm out of healing stuff. I'm, I'm not going to be able to win or survive. Well, the fact is, is that there aren't any more trainer battles until you get to Cerulean City. But if you come up here, and instead of going down the ledges, and you go up here, you can find TM number 4. And TM number 4 contains... Whirlwind. Whirlwind is a completely useless move in Pokemon Red, Blue, and I think even Yellow. What it does is it blows wild Pokemon away, and it's pretty much the exact same thing as running away. In later versions, it becomes more useful because you can use it to force trainers to switch out their Pokemon. But because it does... I'm almost positive it doesn't work like that in red and blue. Maybe it does in yellow, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Because of that, it's worthless in this early... in these early games, so... You can sell it for some money. I actually know a lot of people like this girl who wants to get a bike, but doesn't want to ride it, just wants to keep it shiny. And I'm wondering, why? <laughs> a plain city bike is good enough for me. You can't put a shopping basket on an MTB. And now, this is pretty old, but I'm pretty sure an MTB is a mountain bike. <laughs> These bikes are cool, but they're way expensive. Really? Let's, let's find out. We got just the bike for you, and it is a million Poke Dollars. <laughs> Holy crap, you can't even carry that much money. So yeah, way not worth it. We're just gonna blow that off and forget about getting a bike. Holy crap. Trainer tips. Pressing the B button during evolution cancels the whole process. Which you should already know by now. I mean, I've only shown it, uh, what, three times now, I think? <laughs> Anyway, some of you may be wondering why I'm not playing Yellow still. Well, as I said in the Let's Introduce Pokemon video, I want to show off Red's more unique art style. As you probably noticed, Yellow's art style is more along the lines of the cartoon slash anime, whichever you want to call it. And while it's true that Yellow is more heavily based off of the show, and you could say that's why they chose to go with the different art style, the fact is, is that they stuck with that style of art until Pokemon Black and White, which I believe was released in the year 2010. This is a 1995 game. I'm pretty sure Pokemon K Yellow came out in 1996 or 97. Yeah, that one. Another reason why I'm not playing, playing Yellow and I'm playing Red is the difficulty. Yellow is a lot, and I do mean a lot easier than Red. And the main reason for this is because Yellow gives you a Charmander, a Bulbasaur, and a Squirtle. Yes, you get all three of the starter Pokémon, and that on its own is enough to make the game just a friggin' cakewalk. But on top of that, they also change several of the gym leader's Pokémon. And in most cases, they... The, the updated team roster for the gym leaders are far less challenging. The biggest reason, though, that I'm not playing Yellow is because I'm actually planning some point in the future on doing a Nuzlocke challenge. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. Nuzlocke? If I'm wrong, please correct me. Anyway, I'm actually planning on doing one of those. Should I decide for sure I'm going to do one, I'll definitely record it and put it on YouTube. More than likely, it won't have commentary unless there's something that I really want to comment about. But yeah, I would actually love to do a Nuzlocke challenge for Pokemon Yellow. So, yeah, that's the biggest reason why I'm choosing not to, but the other reasons as well, especially the art reason. Oh, and you can rate your Pokédex. I don't think I've shown this off yet. And apparently I suck. <laughs> I've only gotten six Pokémon. But to be fair, I'm not exactly going to catch... I'm not exactly shooting to catch them all during a playthrough. I will have an extra video showing every single Pokémon's Pokédex entry. In fact, that's probably going to be the My Thoughts video, as opposed to still pictures like I normally do. <laughs> Something funny, though, that I've actually been thinking about since I started just a couple seconds ago explaining why I'm doing Yellow, um, is that I remember from when I was younger that so many people thought that in Pokemon Yellow you could catch every single Pokemon. Because if you're familiar with Pokemon, then you'll, you'd know that they like to do something cheap that makes you have to buy two, gif two different versions to get all the Pokemon. This is something that I actually don't care for, but people thought back then that if you got Pokemon Yellow, you could catch everything. Now that is a huge lie, but even the folks that are wor that were working at GameStop, and GameStop was not nearly as huge as it is now, were telling people that 
yeah, you could catch every Pokemon in Pokemon Yellow, and the whole time I heard that, I was just thinking, oh, you can't. <laughs> uh, but it, what, what's really funny about this is the fact that I remember when Emerald came out, the same exact thing was happening. People were saying that, and at least people around me were saying that. And people at GameStop were still saying that kind of baloney. It, it's just, it's hilarious that they actually did that. At least I think so. So this guy wants to trade, and yes, there are in-game trades. You can use it to get some pretty rare Pokémon. For example, if you have a Poliwhirl, which is surprisingly easy to get, then you can get a Jinx. I cut out me going into that building because I talked to a guy for like three minutes worth of footage, and he all he does is explain something that the game actually tells you about. That's the room, in case you were curious. He talks to you about the badges. Now, um... Right around here, you're going to want to save, if you haven't already, because, well... Well, you'll see. Even their police force has trouble with Team Rocket. Which is hilarious. You want to save before you take that step. Yo, Red! You're still struggling along, struggling along back here? I'm doing great! I caught a bunch of strong and smart Pokémon. Here, let me see what you caught, Red! Ha ha ha! Uh jeez. So yeah, it's another rematch with Blue. This is the third one. And he's much tougher than he was in the last one. As you can see, his Pidgey evolved into Pidgeotto. And his Pidgeotto is by far his toughest Pokemon. It's It being level 18 and having some of the highest stats of any Pokemon we've faced so far. Aside from that friggin' Raticate. <laughs> Damn you, Raticate! <laughs> But yeah, aside from that, it this, these things just make it so much harder than anything else that Blue has right now. So your biggest help here is actually going to be status effects. Like Confusion, as you saw. And Sleep. Sleep is helpful too, if you have it. It's unlikely that you do, but if you do, then you may want to use it. Paral Paralysis is helpful too, but not as much. Because of that. It has Quick Attack. Also, moves such as Sand Attack are going to be a ton of help here. For example, if I were to send out Pidgeotto and just start spamming Sand Attack, then its Pidgeotto would have lower chance of hitting me. If you have a Pikachu or a Geodude at this point in time, then, you know, I'd recommend using them to just make Pidgeotto that much easier. Because Pidgeotto does have Sand Attack, though, so you want to be aware that it your accuracy is more than likely going to fall a little bit. This can be easily fixed by simply switching out your Pokémon. But yeah, that takes care of his toughest Pokémon. At least what I consider his toughest Pokémon. None of the other ones ever give me this kind of trouble. But this takes us into Abra. And Abra... Honestly, it's a free kill. <laughs> Since it has no attacks other than Teleport, it can't really hurt you. If you took heavy damage from Pidgeotto, this is your chance to heal. And other than that... You know, just attack Abra. You can use anything. Even your weakest Pokemon can more than likely knock out Abra because it can't hurt you. I don't think Blue will switch it out. It's an easy KO. Definitely the weakest Pokemon it has. And since Bug-type moves are super effective against Psychic, I take this chance to use Abra to heal Zubat, as well as knock it out. <laughs> but yeah, that's Abra. Really, nothing. Definitely doesn't stand up to Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto is so much tougher. Anyway, this takes us into Ratatat. And though it's not as tough as Pidgeotto, Ratatat may still give you some trouble. The big thing to remember is that it has Hyper Fang. And, you know, Hyper Fang's really overpowered for this point in the game. It's actually pretty strong through the whole game, in case you're wanting to use a Ratatat and Raticate. Another thing to remember is that it has Quick Attack, so it has a move that'll let it go first. So, in case you've forgotten about that, just keep that in mind. You say your Pokémon's about to go out, and it's about to go out. You think that you're gonna be able to get the last hit because you're faster, and then it pulls out Quick Attack, and then your Pokémon goes down. That can completely screw you over. However, as long as you remember these things, you shouldn't have any trouble. It's his second toughest Pokémon that he has in this battle, but it's still just a Rattata. We've fought plenty of them by this point. Nothing to worry about. It's no Raticate. <laughs> so yeah, we just want to finish it off. And now, the next Pokémon, the strategies, you know, don't use the same strategy. Well, I guess you could call it a strategy. 
that I'm gonna actually talk about for its up for Blue's upcoming Pokemon if you chose a Pokemon other than Squirtle. But his next Pokemon is Bulbasaur. And Bulbasaur is nothing special. He'll use Leech Seed at some point, and then he'll just spam Vine Whip and Tackle. I don't even know what his other move is, because he doesn't ever use it, I don't believe. But as long as, you know, you're set to go, then I wouldn't worry about it. If you have a flying Pokemon, then that'll just make this so much easier, because it's going to use Vine Whip more often than Tackle. Also, much like uh, Sand Attack, if you switch Pokemon, Leech Seed's effects will stop working. So, you know, there's that strategy, too, in case... Oh, its other move is Growl, so yeah. <laughs> but there's that strategy, too, in case, you know, you feel like you're stuck. So yeah, I use Sand Attack just to make sure, because my other Pokemon are a little low, and, you know, I'm a little concerned. But, honestly, I could have just started using Quick Attack and taken him out already. Leech Seed's very annoying, but at this early, this early in the game, that's all it is, is annoying. By the end of the game, it is so awesome. I, I love Leech Seed towards end game. <laughs> anyway though, yeah, if you have a Pidgeotto like me, if you've been using the same Pokemon, then just have your Pidgeotto use Sand Attack and then spam Quick Attack. Or just spam Quick Attack. It'll go down before you know it. Come on, finish off the Bulbasaur. There we go. <laughs> and yeah, we beat Blue! Huzzah! Hey, take it easy, you won already! <laughs> Squirtle's evolving! But we're not gonna let him yet. <laughs> hey, guess what? I went to Bill's and got him to show me his rare Pokemon. That added a lot of pages to my Pokédex. After all, Bill's a world-famous Pokemaniac. He invented the Pokemon storage system on the PC. Since you're using his system, go thank him! Well, I better get rolling. Spell you later. <laughs> what a douchebag. Anywho, this is it for part number six. I'm Gene the Pink Panther. Stay tuned for part seven. Happy New Year.